Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about style transfer um, with using Epsynth. The great thing about Epsynth is that it is totally free and uh, you can do a lot of cool things. Right now a lot of people are using it uh, with combination of stable diffusion and uh, one day maybe I'll get into stable diffusion. I don't know enough about it. I haven't experimented enough to really make a tutorial on that. But what I will talk about is how if you do know how to use stable diffusion or any kind of style transfer, uh, how you can use uh, Epsynth in combination with those things. So this is a video that I made of, of a kid skateboarding. I shot this a little over a year ago. And uh, this is the original one right here, right under it. I'll let it play out. I was in the car, but I was shooting this on a gimbal. And I turned that into this. And you might be wondering how I did this. And uh, I'll show you in a bit. Here's another one I did of a kick flip. So I'm gonna show you how to do something like this. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go into Google and type in Epsynth. As you can see, I typed some of it out. Uh, you go onto epsynth.com, you download it. The great thing is this is free, so when you download it, what you have to do is you have to put in the video frames into here, into this video thing. So what you have to do is go to the video that you want to use, or in this case, this one. You export it. I'm going to show you how I did it. So you want to export this as PNG. So it's going to export this whole video in individual PNG images. So that's what you want. And you want to save it into a folder. I put it right here, uh, not this one. I export it into this folder. So as you can see here, are, here's are the individual frames of the video. It made 73 frames. And make sure that they're numbered. When you export it, start, uh, name it zero, zero, or I'm not sure if it has to be four zeros or if it has to be, if it can be zero, one, zero, two or zero, 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 one, zero, two. I always do it by four numbers, zero, 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 zero and then 0001. If you wanna be safe and just make sure you don't run into errors, just do it this way, because I know that this works for sure. So uh, what you gotta do is, you gotta get like your first frame, right? You get your first frame, you run this first frame through stable diffusion or whatever style transfer method that you use. You can literally even draw it, like in Photoshop, draw this in a, in a style that you want to make it look like The Simpsons or make it look like uh, Rick and Morty or whatever style you you want in my case I used uh, here's here's like for example I, I use this I use a style transfer program to, to create this and so here's the one that I ended up using I used an AI to create this image this is what the AI spit out and from here I wanted to create this style uh, maybe I'll make a video about how to create the AI and I just ran this through an AI but uh, I use this to to get the style, you wanna run this through whatever method you're using, whatever style transfer you're using, whether you draw it or whatever, you wanna create the first frame. And so when you come into Ebb Synth, I wanna drag this folder, which has all my frames. I wanna drag this into video, right here. So now all the videos are in there. Then you want to put in the style into keyframes. And you might notice something here that right away it made all these extra outputs. So the reason why I did that is because I have multiple images here. And the reason I have multiple images, it's because at some point this image is gonna break. Like there's only so much that style transfer will do let me show you an example. Only from a certain part does it really capture the details because then it starts to get become like kind of messy. Like it, it doesn't look sharp. Let's just go with one for now, right? So I can show you exactly what happens when you just choose one image. I'm just gonna put that one, create a folder where you put that one frame that you created. 
you want to put that into a folder, uh, name it style, and then put it into keyframes. All right, so now it tells you here that from keyframe zero, it will go all the way to 73, which we see 73 frames. From zero to 73, it's gonna create this animation. So what we have to do, we have to select where we wanna save it. Um, actually, let me create a folder. I'll put YouTube, because this is where it's gonna be at. So we select output YouTube, save it in there, and run it. So now it's gonna run, it's gonna save it in here. Uh, it's gonna take a while, so in the meantime, you might want to start opening up your editing software, whether it's Premiere or After Effects. All right, so uh, here it's processing each frame. We use only one frame for the style. We just use this one frame to basically make the whole video. And you're gonna start to see what I mean when I say that the animation starts to break at some point. What you gotta do is go into After Effects, go into the folder where everything is at, output YouTube, click on the first frame, and that's why you gotta make sure it's numbered so that it knows which one is the first frame and which one is the last frame. And uh, you wanna make sure this is clicked right here, PNG sequence. And once that's clicked, click import, you will have here a file that you can drag into the composition. But as you can see, this looks super clear, crisp. Everything is looks really looks really crisp. But then as you get to go further down, see how his foot right here starts to get blurred out? It's because there's like no information that the AI can use. Look at his face starts to you know get all blurry and become everything just becomes mush. Um, a lot of stuff stays intact, like right here. This background stays intact. But then anything else that's moving, like his foot, his face. Uh, starts to just get all messy, right? So uh, the way that you fix that or that a solution, also for some reason it changes the color, uh, like this is the original color, and for some reason it just it uh, becomes this. I don't know why it does that, but um, you know you, you just gotta deal with it and maybe mess with the color grading if you can. Yeah, that's the limitation of this. Uh, so what I did to fix that problem is I grabbed specific frames from my original. All the frames are here and I just grabbed like, you know, wherever I saw that the animation starts to break, like I just like, okay, right there, I need another frame there so that the AI knows what's going on. So I find out which frame is that, um, or you can just kind of go like there's frame eight, but you can also just pick like zero and then maybe eight, and then give it a few frames to work with. In this case, I used five, 12, 20, and uh, I put them into this original one. And then from the original one, I, I, I did, like I said, you can either draw uh, each of these frames in the style that you want, or run it through AI or some kind of style transfer program. And then you will have these frames to work with, so I'm gonna go ahead and restart everything so that I have everything fresh again. Original skateboarding frames, and then put in the styles and some keyframes. As you see, there's a bunch of outputs here. It's going to work with the style frame that you put in here. So from here, as you see, five to 12, five to 12, 12 to 20, 12 to 20, and so on and so on. I'm gonna run this. So just run it. Uh, where's it gonna be saved? Yeah, it's fine. Save it there. So I'm gonna run them all and I want to explain why it's good to have these little extra handles of from zero to five um, and so on because what I like to do in After Effects, I like to have the layers blend so that it's because you can so you can see when there's an abrupt change and each one of these will have an abrupt change when like each one of these layer, each one of these outputs, if you put them like right next to each other, you will notice when the cuts are made. So you don't want to make that obvious. So I use these little extra frames that it already sets up for you to blend them into each other through some, you know, crossfade or whatever you want to use. Right. 
So that's running. It's going to create, uh, it created multiple folders. As that's uh, loading up, it's going to take a while, but I just want to explain something very quickly. When you go into this one, the first one is a zero to five, like, like it says here, zero to five. And then from here, it says zero. And then this will start from zero to five and five to 12. So this is actually going to start from zero as well, but it's going to continue all the way to 12. And this is where I'm talking about. You have these extra frames to work with. So you have some frames to work with in between these two style frames. So you got something in between this and you got something in between this so that you can blend them together and uh, to make it seem a little bit uh, more seamless once you put it into one video. So you can, if you want, you can totally skip that. If you want to make this, you can make this 12 so that it goes from this straight from 12 straight to 20 instead of from five. And you can make this five right here so that it doesn't go from, so that you don't have that, those extra frames. If you don't want that, I mean, that's, that's really preference and that's up to you. Okay. So it finally finished. Let's come over here to where everything was stored. And uh, just to make it easy on me, I'm going to grab all those folders and put it into just one folder so I can find them. All right. So now you have these so you can uh, easily find them. Then uh, I'm going to go into After Effects and uh, bring these in with image sequence pressed. You uh, likely don't have to do all this if you don't have a lot of movement happening. All right. So now I have all the, all the animations here. Let's start with the first one. Let me bring it in here. So this is from zero to five and then zero to 12, then five and five to 20. And then, so basically I know when the next frame starts because it's right when this one ends, the next one, and this is when this one starts. And then this is where this one ends. I know it's kind of tricky, but uh, you'll see what I, why I'm doing, why I'm doing this in a bit. So if you notice, if I play it, there's all the frames and everything seems to be there. So if, if you notice that uh, after each new frame style that pops in, it something changes slightly, right? There's a slight change. They don't look exactly the same, but you see how it's keeping everything more sharp. Uh, there are moments where there is blurriness, like right there, right there. But the AI is definitely capturing more information. So what I like to do here, so I like to blend these, however you like to do it. Uh, I'll, I'll just keyframe this. So the, it's gonna go, opacity is gonna go to zero so that it blends together. Copy and then, and you can mess with the blending however you want so that it blends a little better. Play these, it blends a lot better now. This could be better in my opinion. I'm not 100% happy with the way it came out. So it seems like something was a little off right here. Okay, yeah, so something was off. So I was a frame off. Let me fix this. Like I'm, I'm looking through the transparency. There you go. So yeah, okay, so this was what's wrong with it. My frames were a little off. So I gotta find the right frame. Okay, you see that? I'm bringing the frames to line up. All right, oh, so that fixed that. There you go. That looks way better. That's why it was off. So yeah, so now we have a, a way smoother looking animation. As you can see, it's way, way better. I'm way more happier with this. Uh, the only thing I'm not happy with is the color. The color came out uh, way different than the original, but um, uh, yeah, I guess this could be corrected. Uh, it may be in color grading or some other way. So yeah, this is how you create something like this. It's really cool um, what you can do with App Synth, especially since it's free. Um, it just takes a little bit of just, you know, getting and learning the basics. And then uh, it's it can be a little bit uh, tedious in some ways, but then I think it's worth it. I think it's really cool. And uh, yeah, try it out. Definitely show me stuff that you've worked on. I would love to see stuff that you guys 
do with this kind of stuff um, is always interesting to me. I know a lot of people use stable diffusion with this. People have created some really cool stuff with this. There's a guy named Scott Light Light Sayer. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that. Uh, I just found his stuff and uh, uh, he 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 has done some really cool stuff with this with stable diffusion. Look at this. This is incredible. I believe this is. Uh, I believe he ran this through Stable Diffusion and used Epsynth to create this. If I'm not mistaken, I think he shows the difference. Yeah, that's that's. Look at this. I think this is the original, and then this is after it it's run through Epsynth. It's it's crazy. I don't know what else he used. I know that he uses Stable Diffusion because he's uh, says it right here, Stable Diffusion, and then Epsynth. I don't know what this is right here. Um, but yeah, this is crazy. Um, shout out to this guy. But uh, yeah, that's just the taste of stuff you can do, man. It's it's crazy, crazy times, man. So yeah, that's uh, my tutorial on using Epson. And uh, hopefully you guys can do something cool with it. All right, peace. <laughs>